Welcome to This Week in Orthodoxy, the world's only online video newscast focused on events in the life of the Orthodox Church. I'm Emmy Luveris. In news from around the globe, our top story this week brings news of a modern day miracle. According to reports on Romfea.Greece, in the Greek city of Argos, Christos Argyropoulos took a piece of cloth saturated with myrrh from St. Luke of Crimea's relics to a very ill friend on March 30th who suffered serious spinal problems and endured excruciating pain whenever he tried to move around. Within 30 minutes of being anointed with the oil from the relics, the young man's pain disappeared, and he is now moving about normally. An archbishop in the Russian Orthodox Church during the Soviet era, St. Luke of Crimea was imprisoned several times on account of his faith and was tortured for as long as two years at a time in gulags. He was a doctor and professor of medicine known internationally for his research on anesthesia and his innovative surgical techniques. He is known as the Blessed Surgeon. St. Luke of Crimea reposed in the Lord in 1961 and his prayers and relics are known to heal many people today of physical maladies as witnessed by Christos Sergiropoulos and his friend earlier this March. And next up, asbestos has been discovered in ancient frescoes on the island of Cyprus. Hundreds of years before asbestos became ubiquitous in the construction industry, Orthodox monks on Cyprus used the fibrous material in plaster coatings underlying their frescoes. UCLA researchers discovered white asbestos in the finished coating of the plaster underneath a portion of 12th century Byzantine-style fresco in the monastery of St. Neophytos. Before its carcinogenic character was known, humans used asbestos for thousands of years, but this is the very first time researchers have discovered its use in medieval art. The monks appear to have used the material to create a smooth mirror-like coating on the icon surface. The team from UCLA plans to look for other examples of this rare technique on the island. Our next story features Orthodox chaplains who serve overseas during Holy Week and Pascha. The number of Orthodox Christians in the U.S. military service is estimated around 39,000. Currently, there are fewer than 20 Orthodox chaplains covering all of the U.S. armed services, both at home and overseas. With few Orthodox military chaplains to serve them, many Orthodox service members are going without religious and pastoral care in the U.S. military. However, several Orthodox Christian chaplains will be celebrating Holy Week and Pascha services for military personnel abroad and stateside this year. Orthodox priests in the Army, Air Force and Navy will be holding a full schedule of services in Kuwait, Afghanistan, Okinawa and a U.S. military base in Ramstein, Germany. Coming soon, the St. Vladimir Seminary Choral joins noted chanter Eleftherios Eleftheriadis from the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Shrine Church in New York. They will be presenting Heaven and Earth sacred music from the Byzantine Greek and Slavic Eastern Orthodox Christian traditions and performing at the Glicker Milstein Theater in New York City at 7.30 p.m. on Thursday, May the 1st. The concert is part of Columbia University's Institute for Religion, Culture, and Public Life Sound and Spirit series. It broadly looks at how religion, faith, identity, community, and the political intermingle in the musical expressions of faith. A panel discussion on the spiritual devotional and musical dimensions of Orthodox liturgical music will follow with several notable panelists from around the world. Visit St. Vladimir's website at svots.edu for more information. And in news from OCN, OCN is excited to announce the relaunch of one of its most popular podcasts, Our Life in Christ and in America with host Bill Hinkle. A former minority whip of the State House of Representatives in Washington, Mr. Hinkle is an active member of his local Orthodox Church. Be sure to tune in to all new episodes starting April 9th. And OCN wants to see you in pictures. The Orthodox Christian Church can be found in the most intriguing places around the world. Just in the last several weeks, our program featured churches in Guatemala, Cameroon, Pakistan, and King George Island in Antarctica. 
What seems normal to us here in the U.S. may not seem that way in other parts of the world. We want to see and share what you and your parish look like and how it celebrates Holy Week and Pascha in the state or country you live in. Send us pictures or short video clips so we can share in our Orthodox Faith Walk experiences. Be on the lookout for future reports and images based on your submissions. And remember, there's still time to express your appreciation for this program with a Lenten donation. Every gift makes a difference, no matter the amount, as we are 100% listener-supported. Visit our website at myocn.net or call and speak to one of our ministry volunteers at 954-522-5567. That's it for another edition of This Week in Orthodoxy. Until next time, let's go forth in peace. For everyone here at the OCN Studios, we wish you a blessed Holy Week. I'm Emily Veris.